What makes you think that you're doing the kids that are grandstanding any favors by going along with their manipulation? Because I can't decide. Because I would say you're allowing attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. Professor Peterson, I teach students. I teach trans students. And I'm asked often to call people singularly they. It started probably about four years ago. It struck me as very odd. I'm 52. And some of them, you can tell that it's coming from a very deep place, and that's how they feel, and they deeply need to be called they. Some of them, my horse sense says that they're kind of enjoying giving me a certain shock, and that there's a certain theatrical aspect. It's my horse sense that there's a certain epate le bourgeois aspect to it. I kind of feel it, and I'm probably right. But I can't know. I'm a linguist, I'm a person, and my general feeling has been, whatever they ask, just go with it and let's change our usage of the pronouns because we have a lot to do. Now, what you said was interesting. You said that the way that you make the difference in deciding these cases is based on the fact that you have psychological training and you can tell. What I want to know is, for my own elucidation, and also because I think many of us wondered, but then it kind of went by, how do you know? Now, I want to specify, I'd rather you didn't recount the whole episode of how ridiculously you were treated amidst that whole controversy. Sure. Yeah. Three quarters of the room knows, I sympathize with you, I thought it was ridiculous. I want to know specifically, because I'm a linguist, you have psychological training. How would you know? Well, and if you hear, a, I'm yeah. almost done. Oh yeah, no If problem. you hear a tiny bit of skepticism in my voice, you're correct. Mm. However, I am open to being convinced. Mm. Based on your training, which yeah. is immense, how would you know which students to discount as opposed to which ones to go along with? Okay, well, first of all, I wouldn't know, right? Which is part, partly why your skepticism is justified. But I have to be responsible for what I say based on my willingness to take responsibility for my judgment. So I would be willing to do that despite the fact that I might be wrong. But having said that, in, in any reasonable situation, I would err on the side of addressing the person in the manner that they requested to be addressed. Ad addressed. But that's not the issue for me. The issue is now I'm compelled by law to do so. It's like, no, not doing it, not now, because it's compelled by law. So that's the end of the game as far as I'm concerned. So because there is no excuse for compelling it by law. That's my, my position and I think, I think there's all sorts of reasons for that. I don't think it was an isolated legislative move. I think it's part and parcel of a whole sequence of legislative moves that have been made and that continue to be made in Canada. I think it's an attempt by a certain radical ideological, what would you say, a certain radical ideology to gain the linguistic upper hand which I think is a terrible thing to do, to allow. So I had lots of reasons for rejecting the legislation, but it had nothing to do with it. Very interesting. We're talking about expertise here, and my ears pricked up when you talked about how there is a way of thinking that would allow us to decide. I know some no, of No, there's my a way students. of thinking that would allow me to decide for me. No, us to decide for us. Surely you have a larger mission than just what's going on in your own head, and I mean that. No, I had a perfectly straightforward mission, which was there's no damn way I was going to say those words when I was compelled to by law. But that was my wanna, mission. You weren't trying to model for the rest of us a way of thinking it was really only about you? No, well, it was about me and the law. I thought the, law, the lawmakers had gone too far. They'd stepped out of their appropriate territory into the domain of linguistic freedom. And as far as I was concerned, I was going to put up with that. And so if people were happy about that and wanted to follow the example, well, that was fine with them. But for me, it was something, and that, that was the statement. I'm not doing this. And then if people can draw their own conclusions from that. Maybe they want to do it. I mean, and I've spoken with no shortage of trans people. and. You know, my proclivity has been without exception so far to address them in the manner that seems most socially appropriate under the circumstances. Now, you asked, I mean, you know, you asked a specific question, which was, do I have special expertise that I might share with, with other people? you're doing Martin Luther, and I think that these issues are a little subtler 
than those. And so, well, I'm what just makes waiting. you what makes you think that you're doing the kids that are grandstanding any favors by going along with their manipulation? Because I can't decide which ones those are. Well, I just then, have my gut instincts, well, and that's not well, good enough. Look, fair enough. But you have a type one and type two error problem. So one error is that you don't call students what they deserve to be called. That's one error. And the other error is that you you call students what they want to be called even though they don't deserve it. And so what you're trying to do optimally is to minimize both those errors. And to do that, you have to take a middle route. Now what you've decided to do, and I'm not criticizing it, is you've decided to allow for the possibility 100% of one of those errors because you think it's a less significant error. And you know, you might be right, but it's not like you're acting in an error-free manner. You've just decided to minimize one form of error at the expense of the other. Because I would say you're allowing uh, what would you call it, attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. Now, and I'm, that's, I'm, believe me, it's not isn't a criticism. Just, it's not a criticism. I understand why no, you're doing isn't, it. Isn't John, Professor Peterson, isn't John just erring on the side of generosity and I have compassion? one more thing to say, because sure. I'm not going to take up any more space. Okay. Are you saying that psychological theory has nothing to teach us about this because you're talking around my question you're gorgeously articulate you're smarter than me does psychology have anything to teach us or not yes or no i don't on think, this question i don't think that it has anything to teach i don't think it has anything to offer that i could teach you without let me think so it's that. just too complicated no no it's not no no it's not that well, it is that in part because it's not easy to articulate out the principles, the unerring principles by which you would make such a categorical judgment, right? Because those are very situation-specific problems, you know, and it's, it's part of the problem of how, of how to make a, um, a generic moral truth apply to a very individualistic situation. The, and the problem in the sorts of situations that you're describing is generally the devil's in the details, right? If you have all these students, the ones that you just laid out, they vary in their attitude towards their, their self-professed gender from the ones who are grandstanding to some degree, let's say, to the ones that are very serious. And you have to make a judgment in the moment that is dependent on the variables that present themselves in a very complex way in that situation. And I understand why you, you took the pathway that you took, and it's, it's perfectly reasonable to do so. My point was that you, you don't minimize all the errors by doing so. It's fine. It's, it's still a fine way of approaching. It isn't. My point was that because of my psychological acumen, I would say, that the experience that I've derived is that I would be comfortable in making the judgment and taking the consequential risk. I'm not saying I'd be correct. That's not the same thing at all. I'm willing to suffer the consequences of my error. That's not the same thing as being right. And so if I feel that a student is manipulating me, then I'm not going to go along with it. Now, I might be wrong about that and actually hurt someone who's genuinely asking for something that they need. But I'm also, what would you say, sensitive to the error of allowing manipulation to go unchecked. 